Blown that green flag, so we are off and we are running the first novice race. You'll notice we have an entry ramp that they can use or they can go down through the cones, whichever they like. But right now they've got to make entry onto the water as they hit the island for the first time. That is what we call turns one and two. They will then transition to the first hairpin, which is three and four, before they make the shoot on the island. Boy, they're taking that pretty good. Oh, a little wide there. That's Tabitha Sargatz out there out of South Lyon, Michigan. Tabitha, part of that Sargatz family, really known, really a famous racing family here in the hovercraft. But now we've got the first of our craft going across onto the chute. Tommy Chapman got in a little bit of trouble there. He let off the gas and uh, lost his cushion and almost flipped it. He's back on it and he's getting ready to enter the horseshoe turn. Oh, and he misses a shoot. That uh, shoot going across the island there is uh, so these craft can get some more experience and head on over the land and show the capabilities of the hovercraft. We try to get as many water land transitions as possible. And I tell you what, the Parks and Rec Department has done an excellent job setting up a world-class hovercraft course this year. We've already got craft now at the north end of the backstretch. Once again, they're going to go around that curve. They're going to make the transition around that cone on the north end of the backstretch. That is about the top speed they're going to hit on this course. They will then come back south. We see a slide job right there by the green craft coming around, taking the lead. They will do an immediate right at the next cone. You see the green craft coming towards right now, so and then we'll come and transition back onto the bank. He got a lot of good pointers. Definitely having some trouble out there. 
there in the University of New Hampshire machine. Uh, don't know what it is, but it looks like he may have some skirts blown out there in the back. It's not normally a problem, but sometimes if you have to stop on the water, you'll get some water up into your hull, and that uh, adds a lot of weight, and they don't go too well. In the meantime, coming around the hairpin on the north end of the track, we've got that leader up there right now coming through the hairpin. That is the number 88 machine out of the Cary Grove High School out of Cary, or, yeah, Cary Illinois. So once again, that machine right now coming towards the final curve. Going to be headed toward the back one more time, and that will be our leader as long as nothing unseen happens to him right now. In the second place, we've got that red machine right now. We're not sure who the driver is. We don't have all those names up here yet as they're first running this novice race before they can register for the rest of the races. So right now, Cecil Scalp has that checker flag in hand, but right now we've got to get to Cary Grove High School past the start finish line. Looks like we're doing an Almond's race here, switching drivers. across the start finish line, takes that checker flag. Next we've got the red machine coming across also. Now we've got the blue with the black skirt number 58 coming across. Now the Sorgats also now coming to the start finish line. 